to express my Muslimness, and the other one says, I am a Muslim, but I don't need to wear a scarf to express my Muslimness. So you get all this different, uh, uh, these different permutations uh, in approaches. And those who didn't have a religious identity would use all kinds of, of words to describe it, atheist, agnostic, religious, non-religious, but what they meant by them, I really, really wished I could have sat down with them further and discussed what they really, really all thought about these terms, because they were uncertain, certainly about the atheist and agnostic. They would debate sometimes with one another and say, what was agnostic again? <laughs> what was atheist again? So there was some uncertainty there. But also, when they said, I'm, I'm, I haven't got a religion, they said, but not yet. I may have one when I'm older. Um, or I can't make up my mind which religion to go with. So, and atheist could mean lack of belief in God. Agnostic could mean uncertainty about which. So you see, it, there's a lot of fluidity there, and a lot of, as it were, trying to find uh, their way through things. But also, religious could be related, uh, unrelated to religion, and then would go into, as it were, the spiritual side of things. Again, uh, there are some people who say that spirituality is linked to uh, religious traditions, and others say that they're not. But of course, in this case, uh, it would be unrelated to a uh, major uh, world religion. But also some people, and this is where the <coughs> cultural defense theory comes in, would say, well, uh, uh, because I'm white and indigenous British, I'm Christian. Uh, and that was also a marker as the difference between, as it were, that person and the others, and the others were immigrants. Uh, although that was not articulated, in, uh, verbally articulated. And then there were all sorts of categories in between. Uh, no religion, no label, uh, believing in something but not quite being sure what and what to call oneself. Uh, but also, the mixed faith background came out in some of the discussions where somebody said, I've got two religions, I've got a mum who's Hindu and a father who's Christian, and I've got both. Uh, so, and some were just not sure at all. Uh, but also, I've, uh, one finds, talking to young people, that even when they have if you like a label, uh, they may not necessarily adhere to that label at all. Uh, so calling themselves Anglican may not mean that they are actually Anglican as one might understand it. So that's where the last bit on the slide says the label and the self-designation should not be taken at face value. Uh, one of our PhD students, uh, Simeon Wallace, has just published a paper. He's looking more into uh, the, um, as it were, uh, issue of young people identifying as non-religious and what that means and uh, discussing um, a research note by Lois Lee about terminology what do we actually call people um, do he asks Simeon asks do we actually have the appropriate vocabulary to describe the things that are going on in, in among young people so the, the different layers of context play a role family, the neighborhood, the schools, what's going on in the neighborhood, what kinds of, of communities are in the neighborhood. All these things are important. But we can't just, as it were, extrapolate from one case and generalize. That we cannot do. I think we need to look carefully, case by case, and look at the local specific conditions, but also to find out how aware young people are of what's going on around them and how they then perceive that. And that that is where these two articles that I mentioned by Julia Grove and the, the one about the north of England uh, come into their own. Uh, and the context does shape that young people's attitudes to uh, religion, but also to religious diversity, and it also shapes their skills. Uh, there's quite a lot of debate on, uh, going on about uh, uh, skills in term, with regard to religion, but also competence and also religious literacy, and what these things are, and what they mean uh, uh, in terms of religious education. But I think we find again and again that the school ethos and religious education within the school, whichever way it's called, <coughs> are important. And this is also borne out by the quantitative data. When you ask young people, where do you get the knowledge about, young, uh, about religion from? They say, well, from RE, of course. Uh, and they also said that in the quantitative survey. Um, 
And also, if, if there are discussions in the RE context, they say, this is valuable for us. Because this is how we find out how we think ourselves, but also how our peers think. And that shapes their attitudes and their views, uh, and also their knowledge. Uh, I, I mean, I was surprised in, in one school where young people said that they joined in with their Muslim peers to find out what Ramadan was like. What is it like to fast for a period of time? And how do I cope with this? And what is it like to not eat, not drink uh, during the day and still have a normal school day? Uh, so I also put that knowledge, awareness and insight grow with age, but not automatically. We can't take that for granted. You know, you have various stages of learning. I don't think we can go with that. We still need, we can go with it as a, as, a, as a sort of starting point, but we still always need to look carefully at young people where they are, at whatever uh, stage in their lives, in terms of their, their views and attitudes. So depending on, on their experiences, uh, young people can be tolerant and open towards the other, whatever the other is and whoever the other is. Uh, they, some young people said that they can work around things, they can accommodate things. For example, I asked one group or, or some groups, what do you do if you have Muslim friends and you want to go out and eat or, or do something together and they have to go to the mosque on Friday? And they said, well, we just take them to the mosque, they do whatever they do in the mosque, they come back and we carry on work from where So now that, or when they want to eat, they said, well, we find a place where we can all eat. So in, that was encouraging to hear that they could, as it were, work around things uh, in, in a way of speaking. And also, uh, they said that they, they didn't want to judge and they wanted to respect other people, whatever they are, even if they didn't understand what this other was. But one thing was important, that respect had to be mutual. You can respect other people if you find that they respect what you are and who you are as well. If that's not in place, uh, then that doesn't work. Um, and again, uh, uh, it came out that people have the multicultural competence and the contextual skills. Some, some of the Muslim young people indicated that they would downplay their religious identity the moment they left home. Of course, they wouldn't use that language. This is me analyzing it in that way or, or interpreting it in that way. Uh, and also, they articulated what, what I call inside-outside of perception. So in other words, their home life and their religious life at home was perceived as very strict by their peers, while for them it was, as it were, normal. Um, this is often the case for young people, say, in a, in a, in a um, uh, community like the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons. Uh, they, would, they would say that their peers think that they are brought up very strict. Um, and often there is this negotiation going on in terms of the self and, and one's identity in relation to others. And of course that's what we know from identity formation theory, that uh, identity is something negotiated. Not negotiated as a bargaining, but a negotiation in terms of an interaction between people. We find out who we are by engaging with other people, and we can decide who we want to be by finding out what other people are. So what are the implications for religious education? Well, we need to take it obviously into account the diversity of young people, their multiple identities, their religious or non-religious identities, but also their own attitudes towards religion and non-religion. Uh, RE should really, and, and I think does, put, uh, take into account the social context. This is where the teachers' skills come into uh, the equation, what they know about their pupils and how they respond. And in my experience, teachers always try to respond to particular issues in their classrooms and pick them up through, as it were, their lesson plans that they do. The religious composition uh, of the school and the communities around them are important. And, uh, and, uh, and also how school relates to the wider <coughs> context around it. Is it just school gates and it stops? Or do things go beyond that? Uh, and a lot of schools are successful in broadening out and actually uh, some of their, as it were, mandatory agenda is that they should be whole schools in terms of engaging with the community. Uh, the school ethos, I think, is very important. I put scaffolding uh, in another paper that I've done uh, this year. I've, 
I found a whole list of things that support this, the school ethos and the way young people are given opportunities to relate with one another. And my conclusion from that is that, that often it isn't a sort of targeted activity that says, okay, we now want something that brings all the ethnic uh, and, uh, and um, religious diversity together in a school so that they can get on with one another. Often it is just activities that involve everybody. And in the process of that activity, the byproduct is that people from different pupils from different backgrounds learn to get on with one another and understand where they're coming from. And another important thing is that RE is often the source of their knowledge about other religions. So RE and related curriculum time, I'm saying related curriculum time, talking about the other opportunities where young people have to discuss things. We have something called ethics, where they discuss things like ultimate questions or abortion, sort of major social issues, and of course they link into RE. Uh, and I think these are important for young people, and the paper by Angela Quatermain has also highlighted this. She has looked into this prevent strategy in the schools. Uh, her, she comes from an OR, her, her own background is in RE teaching, and she said, time and time again, <coughs> young people said, can we talk about terrorism? Uh, and, and of course it's not in the, the curriculum as such, but what do you do as a teacher? Do you respond and, 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 and try to answer young people's questions, or do you set it aside and say, this is not our concern today? Uh, so she's been looking into all of that, and, and, and um, her uh, work highlights that young people need those discussions uh, in order to find their way through it. Because they say, well, we hear all of this in the media, and what do we do? We know, we know young Muslims or other Muslims in our school, they're not like that. So how do we bring these uh, contradictory perceptions together? And I think the questions to ask are, as I've listed them, um, you know, instead of saying, you know, this is the syllabus and this is the curriculum and this is how it has to all fit together, why don't we ask the question and say, well, what helps young people uh, develop multicultural contextual skills, negotiate themselves and their identities? Uh, what helps them to, as it were, develop skills for tolerance and, and dialogue with other people. But also, and this is where another colleague of mine comes in, Judith Everington, we need to also look at the teachers. Do they have, as it were, the wherewithal to stand in the classroom? And also, in terms of their own attitudes, where do they come in? Uh, do they disclose personal things? Do they not disclose personal things? Do they answer? Uh, uh, questions about their own attitudes? Is that part of the classroom? So I think that is also very, very important and, and very complicated with this uh, quite, uh, as it were, changing landscape in terms of the teacher training. Now here, I had a picture <laughs> with some butterflies, <laughs> but I'm afraid that's a lot more. before your attention. that you finished exactly on time. <laughs> <laughs> and what might that have something to do with, friends? <laughs> <laughs>